Hello. Hello. We are today Empathy in Action in our series of interviews with local role models and leaders and people who are doing things great in the community. And today we are privileged to meet Sarah Hewitt, who is the engagement team manager at Hope Print. And Sarah, welcome. I'm so glad to see you this morning. You and as here well. you the sun is finally out, is I know, I know. What a wonderful thing for Syracuse. I know. It changes the entire attitude of the day. Definitely. Yep. My roommate and I were just discussing that. It makes such a difference when you're able to get out and see the sun. Right, right. Well, we all want to know who you are and what you do and what Hope Print does. So if you could give us an idea of what a typical day might have been for you, um, you know, so we can go back in time for what the actual goal and mission and everything of Hope Print was and what you were planning on doing at that point, because we're guessing that it might have changed since then. Yeah. And so just tell us what a typical day might have been for you back, what, six weeks ago. Oof. How has it only been six weeks? <laughs> um, uh, yes, so um, my name is Sarah Hewitt. I am the engagement team manager at Hope Print, as you said. Um, Hope Print is a local nonprofit. We're located on the north side of Syracuse, um, and we do work predominantly with new American communities, um, but we also welcome individuals and families living in our micro neighborhood to participate in our programs and services as well if they would like. Um, but like I said, predominantly we are working with new Americans and we do um, programming. So we do programming from children to adults. Um, we have a women's group. We have a class called Steps to Thrive in which adults learn um, like how to get a job, um, nutrition, all that kind of thing to get them in a place where they're actually from just going day to day to actually in a place where they can thrive and um, do well. So yeah, we, um, a day six weeks ago, um, I, no day is ever the same, which is part of the fun um, and part of working for a small nonprofit. Um, but we were previously doing a lot of um, community engagement work. So we were going out in the community and knocking on doors and discussing individuals' hopes and dreams and kind of what they want for the community and for themselves and the breadth of the community. Um, so that was fun. So we had a team of um, community engagement specialists that we we're working with and we went out and um, we're knocking on doors. Um, so that was part, the first part of my day, usually um, a couple of meetings where we're fortunate to be in a couple of really great community groups that have still continued to meet um, post pandemic. Um, so we had our, we have our North Side, Steer, North Side Up Steering Committee and things like that, um, which is a coalition of organizations on the North Side. Um, so we would have one of those meetings usually um, in a day, um, about once or twice, once or twice a month. Um, and then, yeah, then we would have an evening of programs. So Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, we have programs. Um, Mondays and Tuesdays are typically the busiest programs because we have our adults and our children's programs. And then on Wednesday, we just have programs for our high schoolers. Um, but it would be getting in the van, going to pick up families that live outside of the micro neighborhood and bringing them to program. And then just a night of either um, being able to sit in on the women's group or, um, hang out with middle schoolers um, in our middle school program. So yeah, we always busy, always something different, um, but a lot of things going on. <laughs> so tell me, what's a typical program, you know, an evening with a women's group? Yeah, definitely. Um, so we have really, really great program coordinators who are experienced either as teachers or just within the community. Um, so the women's group, for example, they, our last um, session was a lot of fun. We did, um, we usually start by just sitting around the room and talking, catching up. Um, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful scene. There's a lot of um, women from a lot of diverse backgrounds and um, it's just a lot of fun to sit in on it. And so we usually start, like I said, discussing, just kind of talking, catching up. Um, then we have dinner typically. Um, and then we go into the activity for the evening. So the program coordinators for her village um, set up like vocab cards and so they're going over their vocab every week um, just on day-to-day -day things. So I think they did a week of doctor um, 
vocabulary, things like that, um, vocabulary that they need to understand, like children, some of the letters that come from their children's school. Um, so they would usually start with that. And then they did um, the final week of program, they did an art project. So we made these coasters, which was really fun. Um, but yeah, so it's different every week, though. Sometimes we have special guests, sometimes we do different projects. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Nice, nice. Yeah. So, sure things have changed. Uh, you okay. know, getting together and doing groups and chatting and things like that. So tell me, uh, you know, last week, uh, what would a typical day be and, and how are you adjusting? Um, definitely. So each week we are doing wellness calls for families, um, just checking in, seeing what the need is, um, and really helping them navigate that. Um, so we've been doing a lot of connecting people to resources that are existing. Um, there are a lot of great resources in the community that we've been able to, um, that we've been super, super grateful for and we've been able to use for our families. So like the CNY Diaper Bank, um, the Abundant Life Church has a really great food pantry that we've been going to for our families. So just kind of connecting them to resources um, through those calls. So if they do need food, if they're unable to get to the grocery store for transportation reasons or health reasons or things like that, we are doing those grocery drop-offs from the, for them um, from like the food pantry or anything like that. Um, talking to people about how their day is going how was their last week is everyone in the house healthy does anyone need anything um in the earlier days of the pandemic when all the stores were out of toilet paper we <laughs> would drop off toilet paper things like that um so just really trying to stay connected amidst all of that's going on um so we do like i said those wellness calls and we also switched to some online programming um so our women's group now meets over a Facebook group every week and a Facebook, nice. uh, yeah, a Facebook video chat. Um, so they've been doing a really great job of that. Um, we do have some of our other program coordinators for children's programs posting things on their Facebooks and posting it on the Hope Print Facebook and just, like I said, trying to stay connected. Um, we also have been doing lots of Zoom meetings. <laughs> like I said, all of our um, previously scheduled Northside Up meetings are still taking place and it's been really great to be able to be in a place where we're all collaborating and talking about what we need and how we're going to get it collectively. Um, so it's been really beautiful in a lot of ways, but in a lot of other ways it's been challenging not being yeah. able to see everyone and yeah. connect as much as we usually do. I have to say one thing I love about uh, your mission and what you're doing is being proactive. You know, so many nonprofits are found in a situation where they, they have to be reactive. And so they know people are hungry, so they're providing food. They know people need legal service, so they're providing that. I love that you're going door to door and asking people what they personally need to thrive. I mean, that can actually direct an entire organization yeah. or change the direction of, of an organization Definitely. based on what specifically someone needs to not only be fed and cared for and find a job and find housing and all those basic things, but what specifically, you know, and it might be based on where they're from. It might be different based on the nationality that they're bringing with them as to what they might need specifically. So I, I love that. I love the proactive part of it. And that must be very exciting for you to do also. Definitely, definitely. And I think that's a huge part of who we are and who our identity as an organization is too, just listening um, to needs and trying to determine how we can fit into that instead of imposing anything. And I think that's really, when you're talking about community-based work, I, I feel like that's the really the best way to do it um and i definitely think it gets people um a lot further when we have that relationship built on like mutual trust and we're able to discuss these things and yeah it's really it's fun yeah, yeah. you know i interviewed adam adam sudman last yes. week from with love and i remember when he first came here awesome. and one of the things that uh that i found really inspiring was that he was helping these people find the food that they yeah that they wanted, that they were used to eating, that they were used to cooking with. And I loved it that he went to them and found out what they needed just the same way. It, it's, it's a different way of looking at things instead of making assumptions like, well, you know, we're, it's looking at the commonalities, but also saying, 
we know you're different because of your background. Let us respect that and, and do something specifically for that. So I love that. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, can you tell me, are there things that you're creating now that you see moving into the future when we get back to being able to, uh, you know, not so much of the social distance that we're doing? Um, yes, definitely. And I think, I think if anything, it's just been a time just showing the importance of connecting and continuing to maintain those relationships. Um, and I think that's something we will definitely continue to be doing moving forward. There's a lot of awesome community resources that we didn't even know existed before. Yeah. Um, and so it's been really great to be able to see um, either how we could connect our families to those things or how um, we can collaborate to create those things. So I think it's been a really um, just a great learning experience. And I think we're going to be taking a lot of that back with us and discussing how we can change some things potentially to better suit the needs of our families. So Yeah, it is a learning experience all the way around, no matter what. I mean, no matter how many things that are wrong with this pandemic and no matter how many things that we might complain yeah. about it, they, we are all learning an incredible amount of things. And we're yeah. all, we all are learning who else is out there and who can we really? collaborate with and what makes sense. So yeah, those are gifts that we've been calling them gifts that we're taking from here. Exactly. Into the future. So this is Empathy in Action. So we should bring up empathy. And obviously we've already spoken about you know, a couple of those things, but is there anything that you wanna share? Is there a strategy or um, you know, maybe a way that you incorporate it into any part of your job or even into the, the overall mission of Hope Print? Uh, definitely. Um, and like you said, I think a lot of what we do is trying to listen um, and trying to engage in empathy every day with everything we do. And I think something that's been really fun about making those weekly phone calls above, like, do you need food? Do you need diapers? Things like that. And like you said, the basic necessity is something that's been really great about making those phone calls is just um, talking to people and asking them how they're doing and if individuals are having trouble with the like school from home adjustment for example and just need a second to talk to another adult like during the day if their yeah. spouse is still working things like that um just having a second to talk and be like this is hard and <laughs> it's just yeah. hearing them out through that um and I think a lot of people are experiencing a lot of the same things um even though there are obviously a lot of differences um, but there's feelings of solitude. There's that feeling of just kind of like, when is this going to end? And I think that's sharing that is really powerful and sharing that you're going through similar things, even though it's vastly different. Like I don't have children, um, but I feel like there's definitely um, taught being able to talk to mothers just kind of about how they're doing, um, what else they need, things like that, and just really getting that one-on-one -on -one connection even yeah. more. Like I've been able to create relationships with families that I wasn't able to previously because I was doing the transportation aspect and wasn't always able to sit in on um, programs. So it's been really fun getting to know everyone and just kind of continuing to have those conversations. Yeah. Well, I, I do remember that when my children were young, how important it was and how relieving and how just being able to spill out to another adult after a day, you know, of actually having a conversation where your voice is heard and not just, you know, listening or hearing yourself talk to kids. That, that's huge. So I totally understand that. Yeah, and I think that's a really beautiful thing about the women's group still meeting as well is just like having that one-on-one -on -one, or not even one-on-one -on -one, that's a big group but having that connectivity and talking to other adults and even if their other uh, children are present a lot of the time obviously but it's fun to be able to just talk about talk through kind of some of these difficulties with online learning and things like that and yeah. managing it and just understanding we're all doing the best that we can with what we're given and it's what we're working with <laughs> You know, one of the things that I teach in uh, one of my empathy presentations is learning someone's story. And, and isn't that just really that one of the basics of Hope Print is taking the time to learn someone's specific story and finding that connection. At, even if you don't 
really speak the same language or you don't have any of the same upbringing. There is always a commonality once you learn someone's story and once the commonality is there, then you've got the relationship and, and how beneficial that can be for both people. So it, it's a it's a wonderful project. I, I love what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah, and it's been so fun too when we're doing like the food drop-offs and things like that. It's been fun to be able to wave through the window at families. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to see like <laughs> little heads peeking over the couch. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's been, it's been good to remain connected even with all that's going on. But. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. Me and too. is there anything that you would like to add in at the end? We will do links. Um, in the text uh, with the video for whatever you want to include and you know obviously your website yeah. and then um, just as a final whatever is there something you'd like people to know um, definitely if we're doing links I think um, something that's really cool that we've been compiling we have a lot of really great members of the team that have been sending resources in and looking um, at different organizations and what they're doing and sending it all and we compiled it and so we do have a page on our website um, with all of the community resources that we found so anything more than happy to have um, shared with me as well um, if you want to connect anyone to me that's totally that'd be awesome um, like I said we do have that page on our website we also have a kids and youth page um, which is fun and so our kids and youth team has Come, um, collected a bunch of different like videos and a little like book on corona for kids and things nice. like that so we do have some really great resources on the website um and then because we are still working on it obviously the plug for everyone to fill out their census <laughs> and yeah that's something we're still working on as well um but yeah those are and thank you so much for doing this this is a really great project Oh, thank you so much. I really hope people are getting benefit from it. I'm definitely enjoying meeting everybody out there and meeting all of the people who are making such a difference and providing resources. I mean, it, it, I think we are definitely going to come out stronger just because yeah. of all of the collaborating that we're doing and learning about yeah. each other. I don't think there's any way to get through this the exact same way. I think it's, no. we are definitely coming out um, on, a better, on a better level. I agree. Here's hoping. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Well, thank you, Sarah. And have a wonderful day. And I hope you can enjoy the sunshine. Beautiful, finally. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we got, it was beautiful on Sunday and then it rained yesterday and we're like, holy. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. A little disappointing, but yeah. It's out again today. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate it. I will talk to you soon and I'd love to talk to you again on the other side of this. Perfect. Sounds good. Thank you. Have a good one, Kristen. Thanks. Bye.